Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and today's project is this bikini bottom. I'm getting ready for summer so this is swimmer bottoms. It's got this yoga waist on it so that you can fold it or roll it or pull it up high. And this is based on a free panties pattern in sizes extra extra small through 3X that is available on my site. I'm gonna link that below and go ahead and go grab that and then meet me back here to talk about fabric and before you cut this out. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about fabric. So I'm using this, this is a polyester spandex athletic fabric that I'm using for my bathing suit. And unfortunately, as of the time of this filming, this particular print was sold out, so I can't link you to it. So this is, uh, I think like 80, 90% polyester and then like 20% spandex. So it does have a lot of four way stretch, which is something you wanna look for for swimwear. This is another sample. Um, this is just something I had in my stash. It's a little bit thinner, but um, this could be used for the outside. And definitely, depending on the color, you can use this for the inside. Now, obviously, I wouldn't want to line a white swimsuit with blue poly spandex lining, but um, I could totally make a blue swimsuit and then line it with self fabric. That's absolutely okay to do. It does not have to be a special fabric to be the lining. The other thing you're going to want to get before you start cutting out fabric is um, you want to have stretch needles. And that's because these are gonna have a ball point on them and they're gonna handle the spandex a lot better. I'm also gonna link below a post about tips about sewing spandex because there are a few things to make sure that you don't end up frustrated with skip stitches or broken thread. And this is one of the big keys is getting those stretch needles. So go ahead and pick out your fabric and then cut it out and then we'll get started. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut out my pattern pieces. So I've got lining and outer fabric for each of the pieces that came with the pattern. And then I'm adding a waistband to this pattern instead of elastic. So these are cut to four inches wide by one inch less than the waistband elastic that is listed in the pattern for that size. Go ahead and cut all of that out. And then I am gonna use elastic around the legs. And notice that I am using cotton swimwear elastic. And I will link this in the post for you. Um, you want to use this because it's not gonna degrade with the sun and the chlorine the same way that um, regular elastic might. So that's why you're looking for the cotton kind. So the first step is going to be to construct basically one entire body made out of lining and one entire set made out of the outer fabric. Um, because of that, we don't have to like sew the gussets in a sandwich or anything like in the normal instructions for this. So I'm just gonna pin the gusset to the back and I'm doing this right sides together. And then take the other end and I'm going to pin that to the front lining. And then I'm finally, I'm going to pin the side seams. And so I'm gonna sew all of those seams. I'm gonna repeat that with the outer fabric pieces as well. And then I will meet you back here and show you what the next step is. Once you have your outer fabric and your lining stitched together, you want to turn the lining wrong side out and the outer fabric right side out. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna place the lining inside the outer fabric. So the two fabrics will end up being wrong sides together, like this. And then you're going to want to pin to match up the edges all the way around. Once you've got all the edges pinned together and all matched up, you're going to want to baste these two fabrics together around all the edges. Make sure that you're going to be able to take this basting thread back out because you don't want a straight basting stitch with non-stretch 
thread to stay in your swimsuit. It'll just pop once it gets stretched. But we do need it there to hold these fabrics together so that we can go ahead and go on to the next step. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, once you've got the edges all basted together, then we're ready for the next step. Now you'll notice I basted half an inch away from the raw edge. That means that since this pattern only has a quarter inch seam allowance, the raw edge is going to, um, the basting stitches are going to be very visible and I'll be able to remove them easily. So I've gone ahead and cut the leg elastic band pieces and just like the pattern says, I've gone ahead and sewn them into loops. So what I need to do now is I need to mark the quarter points on my waist, or sorry, my leg band pieces. And then I need to do the same thing for my leg openings on my bikini bottom. And then let me show you a trick here with the bottoms. Generally, you want to have to stretch the elastic a little bit more on the back edge than you do on the front edge. And that's because the back of the body needs a little more cupping from the elastic. So after I have the quarter points marked, I like to take the two that are on the front edge and I like to move them towards the front just a little bit, maybe like a half inch each. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean that I'm going to have just a teeny bit less elastic in the back that I will then have to stretch more. So I will get more shaping out of the elastic in the back of this where I need it than, in a, than I will in the front. There we go. Now I've got those quarter points marked and I'm going to match up the elastic bands with the same quarter points. Um, and you want to match the edge of the elastic with the edge of the fabric. Make sure as you're pinning that both fabrics get matched to that edge. Okay, once you have those quarter points matched up, then you're ready to take this over to your machine and zigzag that elastic into place. Now I'm not going to take this over to the machine and show you, take the camera, because what I'm going to do instead is at the end of this video and down below, I'm going to link another video of how to sew the panties, and this is a method that's covered in there, and you can see me do it on the machine in that video if you need to see it up closer. So look for that, and then um, I'll meet you back here to show you the next step after these are sewn in. Okay, once you have the elastic zigzagged around the leg openings, you can go ahead and remove the basting stitches from around the leg openings. Okay, the next step is going to be to go ahead and finish these leg openings. So if you have any little pieces or threads hanging off, you want to go ahead and trim those because this edge is going to be touching you on the inside of this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fold this to the inside and you're going to stitch around that leg opening again. Now, if you have a regular sewing machine, you can do this with your regular sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and use my cover stitch to do this. And just make sure that even though it's a zigzag, when you come to these areas where you had to stretch the elastic, you do need to stretch it flat before you stitch it. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll talk about how to put on the waistband and finish these. Okay y'all, here are the leg openings finished off. And so now what we need to do is finish off the waist. The reason I cut two of these bands is because we want to be able to fold it over and I'm working with a directional print here. So I couldn't just cut one on the fold because then when I folded it over, it would have like the wrong side up. So what we're gonna do here is I've sewn these um, each into a loop. And then what I want to do is just like the leg elastics, I'm going to quarter this loop. And then I am also going to mark quarter points on the bottom. Now we want to make sure that this loop is going to be right side up when it's matched to this one. And then you want to go ahead and put them right sides together and match those quarter points. 
And then just like the elastic, I want to go ahead, go sew this with a stretch stitch, and I want to stretch the band until it lays flat against my bikini bottom here. And I'm going to sew all the way around. Okay, once you have stitched on the waistband, this is what it's going to look like. And then what I need to do is I'm going to add the other waistband. First, I need to turn it upside down. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that when I fold over the waistband that I still have a right side up print. So making sure that these flowers are upside down, I want to put this band right sides together with the first band that I stitched on. And since these are the same size, I didn't quarter mark them. I'm just going to match up this seam and then I should be able to match up the rest of the band and add a couple pins, but I won't need to stretch one or the other because they're the same size. All right, let me take this back to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch around that again. All right, we're gonna be ready for the final step here. I'm gonna turn the whole thing wrong side out. And then what I wanna do is I want to take the top band and I want to fold it down right along that seam allowance and making sure that I cover where it got attached to the bikini bottom here. And what that's gonna do is that's just gonna give me a really nice clean finish on the inside, flat finish so nothing is irritating on the inside of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that all the way around. You may need to stretch slightly as you pin because we did have to stretch this waistband slightly to fit the waist. Okay, then either with a zigzag on your regular sewing machine or with a cover stitch, if you have a cover stitch machine, you're going to want to sew all along that edge and then of course remove the basting stitch that we had holding these two edges together. In fact, you could have removed the basting already. And then you'll end up with finished bikini bottoms. Let me show you when these are done. Okay, I've got that stitched on. Let me turn these right side out. And then you can see that now you've got this higher waistband that you can pull up to have a higher waist, or you can fold it down if you prefer that, or you can even just kind of squish it up like a yoga waist, whichever way you prefer to wear it. I like this kind of waistband because it gives you more flexibility to do whatever you want. One other thing, if your edges like this are rolling too much and not staying pressed out to the edge, you can also go add a zigzag stitch along the top edge here to just hold that and keep it from trying to roll to one side or the other. So that is an option. Let me go ahead and take out the basting now. And there we go, there's your finished bottom.